when I was in high school, when I was in high school, Shade. No, that was great. Wonderful. I love those kids. And I love all of you kids too. I love how in love and how angry and how anxious and how out of love you all are. I fucking love you all. I do, really. But right now, I want to introduce uh, a couple of people that are very, very dear to me. And uh, actually, yesterday, I was having lunch with one Jennifer Sara Gonzalez. That's her full name. <laughs> oh, shit! I thought it was Chip uh, yeah. <laughs> And I asked her if, if, if I could uh, introduce them tonight, and uh, she laughed very nervously before. <laughs> actually agreeing to it. I think she's afraid that I'm going to offend people. And I'm not. I'm going to do my best to not offend anybody or make anybody cry. And, uh, but really, her and Logan are uh, two of the biggest reasons, first of all, why I came to Tucson and why I stayed in Tucson. Uh, I'm going to be going back home soon enough, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that publicly and, and really give them all the thanks that they deserve from my part. And uh, I really, truly consider them uh, my, my siblings. One of them is my beautiful younger brother, because my actual younger brother is not that attractive, really. <laughs> and the other one is my humane older sister, because my actual older sister is a scientist, and they're not very humane at all, and she was kind of a bitch when I was growing up. So. <laughs> I love her too, but family. You know, just family stuff. <laughs> and so I just love these two guys, and I wanted to take this opportunity to say that. Yes, they are gringos, but <laughs> not by choice. <laughs> yeah! And really, as far as gringos go, these two gringos are as good as gringos get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, La Chicana Double X and Mr. Dirty Burbs. chance to be around a lot of different kinds of families recently. My friend Raul and I went to Florence to visit the Immigration Detention Center. And you have to wait outside before you can go inside and visit your loved ones. And I was waiting outside, I saw a lot of different pieces of families. And when we started walking in, I thought, oh, I wonder who is going to be the piece that completes them. So there were three brothers. One was about 17 and he was taking care of like a 9 year old and a 12 year old. And they walked in and sat down and it was their father who met them. And then click, they were whole again. And then there was a young woman, maybe 19, 20, and she had a chunky baby with her. And two older people that I thought might be her parents, but turns out they were his parents. And they went in and they met him and he was her husband and the father of the baby. And click, they were whole again. And then there was one other woman, maybe about 25, and she was by herself, and she went in there and sat down and held hands with the man that she was in love with, and click, they were whole again. And I got to visit with a young kid um, that I didn't know, but we were just trying to give them company. And so you get about an hour to talk with your family, and then the Border Patrol guard standing there with really steely blue eyes and really, really red cheeks, he barked an order that cut through all of our conversations and he said, you have about three minutes, so wrap it up. And I kind of really hated him for that. And I hoped that his cheeks were so red because of the shame of his job. And then we laughed and they said their goodbyes and snap, 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 and they were back to family pieces. And this week, one of our own poets, Ilse Flores, had the bad opportunity to be part of that. And she's at home and she's looking at pieces of her family trying to figure out how to put them back together. So her mom was detained and stopped by uh, Tucson police about a day ago. And they called Border Patrol now. We called and called last night, but it didn't do any good. And now she's at Eloy Detention Center. So I just want you all to send your love because she's a poet that's been up here. 
I know many of you are facing similar issues in your own families, and um, we just hope the best for her. So that's why we always say, need one of us, not one more. So on the count of three, we can say that really loud and hope that she can hear it and hope that everyone who's struggling with this can hear it. That would be great. So we're going to say, ni una mas, not one more. Ready? Yeah. Ni una mas, not one more. Ni. <laughs> Ricky gets excited. And so um, as a feature, I wanted to read one of Logan's poems. And this is the one that I'm dedicating to Ilse and her mom and her sister. Because this poem writes the ink. The ink writes the poet. Headlines write the politics. Sentences write the prisoners. Textbooks write the memory. Lessons ignore everyone. Grades make the student. Students learn the teacher. Jobs work the employee. Streets drive the car. TVs watch every household. Religions rely on the fanatic. Prices by the customer. Drugs do the poor. Lines wait out the people. Oil burns until it runs us out. Airplanes fly themselves. Dogs walk the owner. Workers run the country. Bicycles push the leg. Forests make the rain. Chocolates savor the tongue. The sex makes the lover. The baby births a mother. The poet becomes a child. Words write the poet. Poems write the ink, and poem makes the stage seem small. Thank you. Yes, yes. That was very strange hearing my poem from over there. Um, I'm really honored to be here. This is my first time featuring at the Types. Yes! Yeah! So um, and I know that I'm biased, but I really do believe that this is uh, the most interesting literary event happening on the regular in Tucson, Arizona. And it's each and every one of our poets who make it that way, and each and every one of you who support them. So give yourselves a round of applause if you love the types. And especially tonight, you know, I find myself in the position um, where in, uh, in this community where I'm kind of... Um, opening people's eyes to the, uh, to the possibility of uh, the youth who are speaking in our community. Um, but right now, and I, so I spend a lot of time giving big ups to our youth who are using their voices or learning to use their voice. But tonight I gotta say um, that I wanna give a special round of applause to all the adults who are here to listen tonight. Because one thing that we stop doing as we get older is listening to each other. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful and courageous act um, for people who are now out of high school, who are out of their adolescence, to put themselves in this pl uh, place and kind of um, stand in reverence of youth voice. So family members, community members, all of you who are here tonight to uh, lend your ears to the, uh, you are the ones who help create this and make it what it is. And this event is one of the reasons that I stay in Tucson. So thank you. So I changed my name the other day. Ooh. Tired of people misusing and abusing my name in every way. See, it all started with a news reporter. Man, she was talking as slow about all that crime by Mexicans on the border of Mexico. Flash images of brown faces encased in stereotype labels, leaving scars and historical traumas. We all behind bars. Two-thirds of all incarcerated people in AZ are Latinos. And I'm too smart to believe that really we are just messing up. Because I see you legislators creating laws just to make a buck. Wow, it's really unjust. So you can go ahead and take my Sarita, and you can take my Gonzalez too. Take Mexican, take Latino, Hispanic. You're going to choose what you want to anyway. But let me bitch back up a bit. It ain't only about my race that got me turned upside down. I ran into some real contention at the intersection of mujeres and brown. For every man who begs me to speak in Spanish because it's so sexy. <laughs> that makes me want to punch you in the face, Essay. Yeah! 